does God ever think of you and me? Where is God in all this? Has, what is he thinking? Has he forgotten us? As this whole pandemic uncertainty continues, as a tentative roadmap opens before us full of ifs and buts, as some nights a growing restlessness for normality grips us and brings us down, I want to share with you one of the most beautiful poems in the Bible, one that is deeply personal to King David and one that has some great timeless truths about the mystery of God and his involvement with humanity. The all-seeing God, is that an intrusion or a comfort? See, depending on your perspective, these words can sound alarming or comforting. If you can imagine your house under surveillance or subject of a stakeout during lockdown, suppose the walls of your living room were, were bugged with hidden cameras and, and were sending live feeds to some team of nosy bodies out there, how would you and I feel? Maybe embarrassed, maybe ashamed, maybe worried. I'd have the blinds pulled down for certain and I'd be, I'd be hunting out every bug and every camera I could find. Sometimes I wonder, is Alexa listening to us? Listen to these words from Psalm 139. David says, You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. David says, God knows us intimately. He sees everything we do. He goes further than a surveillance team. He even knows what we are thinking. David sees this as a great comfort. He see, see, God has seen us in our lockdown. He knows our thoughts, the, how we wrestle with uncertainty. He gets us. He continues, he says, You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. See, God sees when I stretch out on the couch, tired of nothingness. He sees us restlessly read a few lines of a book. He knows our words before they exit our mouths. Now that sounds invasive, yet David draws great comfort because he concludes that we matter to God. That he is interested in, 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 in our most ins insignificant moments and therefore interested in everything. He continues then in verse 5, You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. The psalm is thought to have inspired that great prayer of St. Patrick's breastplate, Christ before me, and that idea that God is all around us. He's everywhere. Those, that raises alarming questions too. Does God have permission to be everywhere, to be all around us? Does he need permission? David sees it as, a, as the comforting protection of God. The next truth I want you to grapple and wrestle with is this, that he talks about the inescapable God. And again, is that an intrusion or a comfort? David says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. You may find this disturbing that there, that there is nowhere you can go that God won't be there already. We can't outpace God, we can't outfox God, we can't outthink God. You can spend your life running away from God and he'll keep turning up. You can deliberately, shamelessly, socially distance from him and yet his presence is inescapable. That's disturbing if you want away from God, but it's beautiful if you don't. And finally, you've got the God of every detail. And again, the same question is true. Is that an intrusion or is it a comfort? Listen to these words. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. The staggering words explaining God's involvement in every tiny step of our existence, from conception to old age. God has taken a personal interest in you and me, whether we like it or not, from the colours of our eyes to our height to our journey through adolescence to adulthood, our achievements, our disappointments. Nothing has gone unnoticed. 
He's never not being involved in your life and in my life. It's amazing. Now, either freedom has been encroached by God or God's thoughtful attention assures vulnerable people such as you and I. And I want to suggest finally that all of those three truths depend, whether we view them as intrusions or comforts, depends on our relationship with God. You see, either God is being intrusive because we don't want him anywhere near us, or God cares so deeply because of we have such a good relationship with him. You see, God's all-seeing gaze is threatening to those who have something to hide. God's inescapable presence is alarming to those with dark secrets. God's loving, detailed involvement is unwanted to those who are self-sufficient. Yet each of us fall in that category. Each of us have something to hide. Each of us have secrets. Each of us try and do it our own way. And David has this brave prayer at the end that it potentially leaves us very exposed and yet accepted at the same time. Listen to David's prayer. Maybe you'd be brave enough to pray that with David. He says, Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. See, Jesus has died paying the price for our wrongdoing in order to offer us David's kind of relationship. God offers you and I the gift of life, free forgiveness, and a caged meal of falsa welcome into God's family. He just wants us to ask him. Wouldn't you love to feel those thoughts with David, that the loving gaze of God is a delight, that the inescapable presence of God is a tonic, and the detailed involvement of God in our lives is a blessing. No wonder David had a pep in his step. You see, it's the personal relationship with God that gives us courage to pray that searching prayer to a God that we matter to. Maybe you'll join me this day in asking a God who often seems distant to draw close. Ask God to open all of our eyes to see him all around us. May you draw comfort from seeking a deeper friendship than you ever imagined possible before. I'm your host, Matt Tuttleby, with Bundoran Bible Reflections. Have a good day.